Finding an Anglo-Saxon horde site is actually a bit easier than you think. Um, what you need to do first of all is you've got all your fields that you've where you've found uh, Saxon finds have been identified by the uh, finds liaison officer, for example. This this what I found here recently. I'm in this field uh, because I found a Roman brooch and a lovely Roman brooch. You know, uh, and it's dated uh, 50 to 150 AD. So you know, it's 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 really quite old, and it's on the cusp of going in from the Iron Age, where people used to be buried with swords and uh, spears and stuff, into the Romans, where they generally they didn't have spears and swords with their burials. Generally, uh, the uh, the weapons would go back after death. The the weapons would go back to the armory because they're a bit more um, clued up the Romans than the uh, than, than what the, the basic sort of tribe tribal type people we, that we were before and then went back to after so what you need to do is you need to find all the places where you found um, any kind of anglo-saxon and if, if you do get like buckles buckles is, is a key thing and if, you've, if you're lucky to, enough to find a brooch, that's even better. Because generally, uh, those kinds of items were, were lost in sort of a f just a few manner of ways. They were casual drops, but they were pinned through the clothing, usually quite uh, robustly. Uh, so they're not really casual drops. Um, I suppose in a battle, I suppose you could have lost them. Um, and uh, one of the other ways, one of the main ways that you find these brooches is actually the people were buried with them on. So you end up with these brooches in the ground and what's happening is, is as modern day ploughs are going through the soil, they're, they're, hit, they're just clipping the top of the burial and they're, they're hitting these uh, brooches and, and tossing them into the soil sort of thing. And what you're finding is the brooch somewhere else. So what you really need to do in order to find these hordes, and uh, today I'm going to be looking for a, an Iron Age horde, uh, because this brooch, you know, 50 to 150 AD, so it's on the cusp of the Iron Age into the Roman period. What you need to do is you need a, a detector that will search for um, swords. They will search for swords or spears. And I've, I'm lucky to have found a spear. Here's one of my spears. This is an Anglo-Saxon spearhead. You can see that ridge going through the middle. It's been identified by the Fines Liaison Officer. Well, it, well, it wasn't really the Fines Liaison Officer. He didn't know what it was. <laughs> I thought it was uh, English Civil War. But English Civil War would have had a bar going through there like that, like, you know, through this side here, to stop. So when you're on horseback, oh yeah, and you spear someone, oh, dreadful thought, to stop it running all the way through and, you, and then you having to get off your horse, put your foot on the body and tug like hell to try and get it back out because it's got this sort of effect here. <laughs> oh, it would have this bar to stop it from going all the way through. But they didn't have that in Saxon times. So it got sent off to the pictures of this to the British Museum in London and it came back as late Anglo-Saxon. So even though it's not, you know, it's not made of solid gold or uh, it's not particularly pretty to look at, I think this is probably my best find ever because what I've done since is I've bought one of these. Well, I haven't bought one of these. A lot of my subscribers helped to buy this for me because it's very expensive. So, yeah, I've got one of these and that's what it looks like. And it detects iron, it only detects iron. It just detects iron. It doesn't detect non-ferrous, which copper or bronze or anything like that. It only detects iron. Now, the beauty of that is if you're going along and you're swinging your metal detector, you get an iron signal. Oh, it sounds loud. Oh, it's a deep, it's, it's a spearhead. But is it? It could be a small piece of iron that's near the surface. But the beauty of this machine 
is that this machine will only detect large chunks of iron at depth. So this, this thing will go down meters. This can detect um, uh, cast iron drain pipes at six meters. So it's, only, it only, it's, it's made to detect chunky iron. Now, it will pick one of these up no trouble at all. In fact, I have actually got a signal over there because I've been here for a little while and it's, it sounds just like a sword. <laughs> but yeah, that, this, now you, you, could, you could try it with a metal detector, you could. Um, but this, like I said, it only detects chunky iron. Um, it doesn't really detect little nails. But a metal, but a metal detector, ordinary metal detector, would uh, detect little nails near the surface and make them sound like they're huge chunks at depth. So this thing's only going to detect big chunky pieces of metal. And that's the, that's the beauty of it. That's a bit less waffling. I'm going to get out there now and I'm going to show you this target that I found. Sounds exactly like this. First of all, I'll show you what this sounds like. And then I'm going to show you what this target sounds like. And I want you to tell me whether it sounds the same. Because I think it does. Right. If you go end to end. You hear how it dropped out. So it's high, drops out, and then high again. Right, this is the target here. I've got it marked with this bit of wrapper. Uh, Fiona Violets. Something like that. Anyway. So as you heard, like, the, like on the spearhead a minute ago, it's high, drops out, high again. So I suspect that this is going to be something like, hopefully it's going to be a sword, or another spearhead, or more likely a piece of gate post, gate, uh, gate hinge, not gate post. Oh. 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 No. Oh. Oh. But it is long. Yeah, like it's getting the, the length. So I wasn't far off. Right, let's see what other targets I can find. This is a, a, a whisking thing for when they cut the hay, they, uh, they whisk it up to get it dry before they bale it for hay. So that's what that thing is. This is one of the reasons I brought out the uh, spearhead today because I've just dug a massive hole, two foot feet, two feet deep. Whew, a bit puffed. And I'm gonna put the spearhead down there and I'm going to see what it sounds like on Probus Maximus. Right, there's the spearhead down the bottom of the hole and uh, let's see what it sounds like. Well, I'll just turn it over. The, uh, I don't want the soil to get in there. I'll put that way up then it'll stop it going in. Right. Right. Whew. Move the spade, otherwise it will pick it up. And the metal detector. Over here. Right. I have to move you back a bit, otherwise it will pick up the stand. on full power. <laughs> uh, 
Now that's interesting. But it's going high here and then low here. So I'm suspecting when I did it across cross it earlier, it went high, low, high. The low bit must be the, the middle. So where it goes low, it must be at the centre of the metal object. So where it's where it's right in the middle, that's where it must be. It's not on full power. So right there. where it is. Right, let's see if my uh, CTX can pick it up. Should be able to, I found it originally with the CTX. Yeah, it's picking it up. Oh. I've been, been doing it that way. This is why some people think they've got good signals because they get a bit of a high tone. It's to do with the flat iron. I'm going to have a cup of tea before I, uh, or coffee. No, I've got coffee, not tea. I'm going to get, have a cup of coffee, a sit down and a rest and a puff on my vaporizer, and then I'm going to get back to digging up my epic relic that I buried in the mud. <laughs> well, soil. <laughs> so basically, to recap, in order to find uh, an Anglo-Saxon grave stroke hoard, you could really do with one of these. You know, because because the grave goods in a in a in in, in the grave could exceed a hundred thousand pounds per grave depending on what else is down there you could you clearly saw a minute ago and puffed because i just feel dug the old back out again <laughs> that the ctx couldn't see that iron at a certain angle it saw it at one angle but not in another but the the probe was was banging on this absolutely banging so that's what you need to do in order to get a grave you need to get one of these probes because um, the GPX would probably see it, but this was quite clearly a banging signal on that spearhead that was two foot deep. Whew. So this is my advice that you get a banging signal like that, right? Because in a Saxon grave, they would have been buried back, you know, been lying in their grave and the spearhead might have been up next to their body and with the long wooden handle going down and near to the side of them they'd probably have a sword as well and that would be lying flat in the ground so it'd be dead easy to pick this up because it's a flat surface and most metal detectors will see the flat surface um, so you need two banging iron signals quite close to each other within a few feet and that you uh, and that is how you would find the grave initially and then you dig down to it. Hopefully you would find something like one of these, maybe a bit thinner, um, and then maybe a sword. And at that point, you really do need to stop digging and you need to call your fines liaison officer. I'll put a link in the description to how you can find your fines liaison officers. And then sit back, make sure you record the actual place. What I would, what I do, is I get a, once I filled the hole back in 
I take some of the soil out, I find a big rock and I put the rock in the ground level with the soil to, so that you can so that the tractors can go over it and not get damaged or anything but you, you know where it is because there's a rock in the grass so you can easily find it again so yeah that's my advice on how to find uh, a Saxon hoard or burial <laughs> cheers blows the wind of my true love and just drops the rain